Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am it's Robbie Rhino and as you can see G.I. Joe has made its way back inside World of Tanks console with the release of two brand new premium tanks. We have a World War 2 premium tank and a Cold War premium tank and the Cold War one is the one we're going to be looking at in today's video. The Cold War premium tank is the G.I. Joe Stritzvan S1 Wolverine and Era 2 Western Alliance tank destroyer and if it looks familiar to you that's because it is a Swedish tank destroyer the same as the ones we have in the World War 2 game mode. It's got that iconic cheese wedge profile. It's the tier 8 Swedish premium tank destroyer put into Era 2 of the Cold War game mode. The stats on its 105mm gun have been updated and you can see that it has 80 GM so we're going to have to see how effective they are. In today's video I'm going to go over all of the stats of this tank for you. I'm going to compare to the M50 Ontos which is the only other Era 2 premium tank destroyer as well as two other Tech Tree Era 2 tank destroyers. I'm going to show you my commander and equipment setup, talk a little bit about the unique armor profile of the Wolverine and then we'll get stuck into a whole host of gameplay but in the background you'll be seeing the skin of the Wolverine. This is the G.I. Joe skin and it comes with every bundle and you don't have to purchase it as an extra which is very nice and I think it looks pretty cool and it fits in with the aesthetic of the game and it's not too garish and uh, I can't complain about that too much. And now we're going to have a quick look at the price and as usual you can buy it in a variety of bundles. The Prime Bundle comes with equipment, premium time boosters and a commander at 16,560 gold. The Fully Loaded Bundle comes at 15,330 gold with premium time boosters and a commander and the Base Bundle which is just a tank on its own at a 10% savings. Is 11,630 gold and that's the one I've gone for and I'll definitely make sure you stick around for the whole review if you are a newer player or not very experienced with Swedish tank destroyers because there's a little bit more to think about and it's a very big challenge to have good games in this tank if you are a newer player or you don't understand the mechanics of this tank which we'll talk about in today's video. So over here on this Excel spreadsheet, I've got all of the stats of the Wolverine here, all of the stats of the M50 on toss, as well as the M113 and the Object 120. For the purposes of time, we're only going to be mainly comparing the Wolverine and the Ontos as they are two premium tanks and the only two Era 2 premium tank destroyers. But we're also going to make reference to the M113 and the Object 120. To start off with, you can see we're going to look at the bonuses of the Wolverine and the M50 Ontos as they are premium tanks. The Wolverine has a silver bonus of 50%, an XP bonus of 25% and a commander XP bonus of 10%. The commander XP bonus is the same as the Ontos. You have 15% better XP bonus but 15% less silver bonus. So the M50 Ontos is the better silver earner, especially if you are used to playing that tank and you are having good games. And now we're going to get stuck into the raw stats of this vehicle and compare to the other vehicles in this comparison. So starting right off with a great aspect of this tank, you have 2,600 hit points, the best hit points you can get on a tank destroyer in era 2, miles better than the M50 Ontos and the other two in this comparison. And you also have the best view range at 530 meters and you combine that with your fantastic steel concealment and you're going to be outspotting medium tanks, heavy tanks and quite a lot of the other light tanks as well when you're stationary in foliage. I don't know the base steel concealment value of the Wolverine but I know that with my commander and equipment setup I have a steel concealment rating of 79 meters, which is only slightly worse than the M50 Ontos, which is the king of stealth. So when you combine the 79 meter steel concealment rating with that 530 meters view range, you have fantastic ability to outspot your opponents and use stealth as an advantage. In terms of the hit points, like I said, it dwarfs anything in this comparison and the view range is 5 meters better than the Yontos and much better than the two Tech Tree Era 2 tank destroyers. And now we're going to move on to the mobility and here's where the tank gets a little bit interesting. So it's all highlighted in green apart from the hull traverse which would lead you to think that it's the best in this comparison and 
yes you're right but it does have two different drive modes you have a drive mode where you are trying to get into position and you have a siege mode which you enter when you want to engage an opponent when you enter your siege mode it gives you superior firepower your gun handling and dpm gets better your but your mobility significantly drops. Um, if you have played the Swedish tank destroyers in the World War II game mode, you'll know how to enter it. You press left on your D-pad and you will enter the siege mode and you press left to exit it. Um, it can be a little bit fiddly to get used to it and you can remap the button, so do what works best for you, but it's just an added layer to think about and it's something else to think about and newer players might not benefit from having that extra sort of frustration and annoyance in the battle. You'll probably be better off going with a different deck, especially if you are looking at purely a silver earner. But the Wolverine has a 790 horsepower engine with a power to weight ratio of 22.44. When you're in your drive mode, you can go 60 kilometers an hour forwards and 50 kilometers an hour backwards. However, when you press left on that D-pad and you enter your siege mode, your top forward speed and reverse speed drops to 20 kilometers an hour, meaning you are a sitting duck if you're out in the open. And if you get caught on a ridge line, you have to exit your siege mode and it's just a little bit of faff and it can catch you out. So do bear that in mind. But when you are getting into position, the Wolverine is more than adept at getting into position and it does have the best um, power to weight ratio out of it and the m50 ontos and the best top forward and reverse speed to be able to drive in reverse at 50 kilometers an hour means that when you get off a of ridge line you can pull away very quickly and try and reposition and get re-stealthed and engage your opponent from a different position so that's a good plus for the tank but yeah do bear in mind that when you're in your siege mode your mobility is terrible in terms of your traverse speed, as your gun is locked to your hull and can only move 3 degrees to the left and 3 degrees to the right, your hull traverse at 30 degrees a second can become a real problem when you're trying to lead targets at mid ranges or close ranges and trying to get your gun on target to things that are trying to circle you. You can improve that with the mobility equipment should you wish, however it doesn't improve it to a uh, level that I would deem it worthwhile so I run something different as my commander and equipment setup but I've included it here on the right if you use the traction system you would now have a top forward speed of 66 forwards 55 in drive mode 22 kilometers an hour in reverse and forwards in your siege mode and your hold reverse will go up to 33 degrees a second but in comparison then to the rest of the tanks in this comparison uh, when you're getting into position, the mobility is absolutely fine and pretty damn good. The only thing that beats the uh, Wolverine is the M113 with its fantastic 26.88 power to weight ratio and fantastic top forwards and reverse speeds. Um, the Wolverine is the best at driving in reverse out of all the tanks in this comparison so that's a unique feature of the tank but you do have to watch out for that traverse speed as your gun is locked to the hull and can only move three degrees to the left and the right and if we scroll on down here i've put the information of the m50 on toss which gun can move 40 degrees to the left and right so that tank is much better at trying to get its gun around to people that are circling it and aiming at targets that are fast moving at mid ranges so that's something to think about but all in all, the mobility, getting into position is fine with the Wolverine. It's just when you're in your seed mode that it's a problem. If you position yourself well, then you should be golden with this tank, especially with the fantastic concealment that it has. And now we're going to get on to the fun aspect of every tank, and the most important aspect of every tank, and that is the firepower. So in terms of the Wolverine, you have a 10.5 centimeter or 105 millimeter gun that fires APF, SDS, a standard premium and HE. And you also have ATGMs, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. We're gonna focus now on the 10.5 centimeter gun and compared to the other tanks in this comparison. So like I said, you have APF, SDS, a standard premium and HE as your third ammunition choice. 480 alpha damage on your standard and premium rounds and 590 on the HE. Your penetration is relatively low at 367 millimeters of penetration on your standard rounds and that jumps up quite significantly to 451 millimeters of penetration if you fire your premium rounds 
and you have very nice HE rounds at 250 millimeters of penetration for that 590 alpha damage. And in terms of the shell velocity, it's pretty good news for the Wolverine. 1501 meters a second on your standard rounds, 7 meters a second better at 1508 meters a second on your premium rounds, and on your HE rounds, it's 736 meters a second. So one thing to note in terms of this comparison is the M50 Ontos and the M113 have the exact same guns. They only fire heat and HE. They have very slow shell velocity. They have good penetration on their standard rounds at 480 millimeters. However, due to heat being very difficult to penetrate, composite armor and all the spaced armor in era 2 these rounds can be very difficult to use and the slow shell velocity means that they're terrible at sniping meaning the wolverine is the best sniper in this comparison um, in terms of the tech tree vehicles the object 120 has a the best shell velocity at 1710 meters a second on its standard rounds um, but only by 200 meters a second odd than the Wolverine. So the Wolverine and the Object 120 are pretty damn good snipers and the Wolverine has those APF SDS rounds as premium which have the fantastic shell velocity whereas the Object 120 has heat rounds which are a little slower. In terms of the alpha damage, it's very nice indeed. It beats the M50 on toss at 480 and it does feel like it slaps. The standard penetration is a little bit low at 367 millimeters of penetration. You can see that it is lacking compared to the Object 120. However, it does jump up to a fairly nice level at 451 millimeters on those premium rounds, and that's more than enough to go through uh, an FE4 to 11 more often than not from the front. And if you find lightly armored targets, 250 millimeters of HE penetration for 590 alpha damage is absolutely fantastic, and that beats the M50 on top in this comparison but the 105 millimeter gun or 10.5 centimeter gun on the Wolverine is not the only piece of firepower that this tank has it also has um, a six clip ATGM autoloader and with every single um, pull of your trigger you fire two shots so technically you are firing 12 shots per magazine with a three second intraclip reload uh, which means that you have 3,600 damage per clip because your damage is 300 damage per shot. So with every pull of your trigger, you fire two ATGMs that, that fly at 330 meters a second, 450 millimeters of penetration and 300 damage. Um, you have six bursts per magazine so six times two so 12 ATGMs so the aesthetics were right you have 12 ATGMs per magazine and if you penetrate every single ATGM you'll be dealing 3600 damage in 15 seconds from your first shell so very dangerous indeed but it isn't that easy to penetrate every single round more often than not you will track opponents and deal a little bit of damage if you don't penetrate the tank fully however it is very dangerous when you come up behind something or you find something lightly armored and this tank can be a very fierce opponent on the battlefield indeed 450 millimeters of penetration is pretty nice 300 uh, alpha damage is pretty low for an ATGM but of course you have 12 of them per magazine um, so uh, yeah that more than makes up for it with 3600 damage per magazine and to fire it all in 15 seconds is absolutely fantastic. Uh, just bear in mind that the M50 Ontos is a 6 shot autoloader with a 1.5 second intraclip reload and that deals 2340 damage in 7.5 seconds so it deals uh, less damage in uh, half the time and it's not ATGM it is uh, heat or HE but that is something to bear in mind in terms of this comparison. One thing to note is that the Wolverine can use the multiple weapon system and that means you can switch between the 10.5 centimeter gun and the ATGM autoloader by holding down the ammo select button on Xbox that's A and you'll switch between both with no time penalty so it has an incredible firepower that can be utilized to absolutely annihilate your enemies if you're positioned well and uh, you know how to use all the buttons on your controller in a timely manner and you don't get taken out or spotted. 
So now we're going to come on to the gun handling then of the 10.5 centimeter gun and the DPM values of the 10.5 centimeter and the ATGMs. In terms of the aim time when you're in your drive mode, it's 2.7 seconds, which is why I highly recommend you don't fire whilst you are driving. And once you enter your siege mode, it's 1.2 seconds, which is absolutely fantastic and the best in this comparison. In drive mode, your accuracy is 0.35 but when you get into your siege mode it's 0.25 again best in this comparison and you can see that this thing is fast becoming the best sniper in this comparison out of all of these tanks your dpm in drive mode is 3643 however when you enter your siege mode it's 4173 and your dpm uh, on your ATGM magazine is 2958 and that's bearing in mind the 15 seconds it takes to unload all of your shells and when you combine both of these DPMs you're looking at a combined DPM of 7132 it's a technical DPM however because it only applies when you are fully loaded with your ATGMs and also your 10.5 centimeter gun but once you are you do have a technical DPM of 7100 132 means that you can absolutely wreck things that come into your path however you have to bear in mind the reloads which we're going to come onto now so when you're in drive mode for your 10.5 centimeter gun it takes 7.9 seconds to reload one shell whereas once you are in your siege mode it takes 6.9 seconds and to reload six times two ATGMs it takes 58 seconds so 58 seconds to load your 12 ATGM so a very long time indeed two seconds shy of a minute so you do have to factor that in and make sure you make use of when you're moving across the battlefield you go for a reload on your ATGMs you carry 50 rounds with your 105 millimeter gun or 10.5 centimeter gun and 24 rounds with your ATGM so two whole four magazines of your ATGMs your gun depression when you are in drive mode is 2 which is absolutely terrible however when you press left on your d-pad you get 13 degrees of gun depression which is absolutely fantastic your gun elevation when you're in drive mode is 4 degrees which again is terrible but when you press left on your d-pad enter that siege mode you will have 15 degrees of gun elevation however there is one thing that to know on this tank which is terrible and that is you can remove the gun three degrees to the left three degrees to the right it's slower than how the hole moves and it is locked to the hole meaning that when you move your hole your gun blooms out and your gun handling goes so it's better at sniping at mid to long ranges and not very good for up close and personal engagements and getting your gun around on fast moving targets that are near you the m50 on toss as i explained earlier can move its gun 40 to degrees to the left and the right and it's much easier at acquiring targets at close proximity and the other two tanks are much much better as they have fully rotational turrets the gun depression is the best in this comparison um, and the gun elevation is only five degrees worse than the best which is 20 degrees on the m50 on toss but that's enough for the stats of the wolverine we're going to have a quick talk about my commander and equipment setup and the updated stats once those have been applied. Then we'll talk a little bit about the armor and then we'll get stuck into the gameplay. So in terms of the equipment on the Wolverine, I run advanced concealment, I run improved ventilation and advanced loader. And on my commander, I run six sense, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, rapid aim, snapshot, Camouflage expertise, muffled shot, and silent driving. So I run advanced concealment because I want to make the already fantastic still concealment even better. I run improved ventilation because I want to improve the DPM and gun performance to make it the ultimate sniper and advanced loader to improve the DPM. And in terms of the equipment, I run sixth sense and born leader as standard on every vehicle, rapid loading to improve the DPM, three gun handling perks, and then I run three camouflage perks to make this very well concealed. And it's nice to be able to run silent driving, which you can't run on light vehicles. So I run this on tank destroyers to help my concealment when I am moving. And that helps me out a lot in this vehicle and gives me that fantastic 79 meters still concealment rating. 
So when you add my commander and equipment setup, you can see here, like I just mentioned, my still concealment rating is 79 meters. My view range jumps up to 564 meters. I've included the figures here if you choose to use the traction system instead of the improved ventilation, which you can do if you're struggling with the traverse speed of this tank. That would mean that you now go 66 forwards and 55 in reverse in drive mode and in your siege mode 22 in forwards and in reverse and your whole traverse or the traverse of the whole tank will be 33 degrees a second but that is obviously a decision for you but i would recommend taking the ventilation and making this the ultimate sniping tank at mid to long ranges and with my commander and equipment setup applied to the gun stats then i now have a 1.13 second aim time in siege mode and a 0.2 accuracy which is absolutely phenomenal my dpm in siege mode is now 4881 with just the uh, 10.5 centimeter gun and with my ATGM it's 3698 DPM of course you only have two whole magazines and when I combine both of these DPMs I have a technical DPM when I am loaded of 8579 but of course that doesn't take into account you could only fire two whole magazines of your ATGMs and you do have to reload for a whole minute so that's technically a DPM when you're loaded but bear in mind that will drop dramatically when you are only Sort of using your primary gun although to have a dpm of 4881 on a primary gun in era 2 of the cold war game mode is absolutely great to put that into a little bit easier perspective i now reload every single shell on my 10.5 centimeter gun at 5.91 seconds and i reload a whole magazine of 12 80 gms in 43.4 seconds so that's it for the stats of the Wolverine and the comparison. Let's talk a little bit about the armor and I've got a couple of uh, screenshots here from the garage of the armor viewer of the G.I. Joe Wolverine. I almost forgot the name of it completely. You have a 60 millimeter um, upper plate and lower plate and although that figure is very low, look at the angling on this tank. It means that uh, if you use the overmatch mechanics due to the angling, you have to use that figure of 60 millimeters. You times that by three, which is that add one millimeter. And this is the caliber of gun you need to penetrate through your upper plate or lower plate on this tank. So you need a caliber of gun of 181 millimeter, 181 millimeters or higher, or you could have heat rounds on a higher caliber gun. The easiest thing to do would be to aim for the cupola, which is 15 millimeters, or just get around the sides and you have 30 millimeters of side armor. And that will be a very easy penetration indeed. And you can also penetrate this thing through the upper part of the drive rail from the sides. If you're looking at this tank from above, you'll be able to penetrate directly onto this tank. But bear in mind that the hole is actually smaller than it looks because the sides is just where the tracks are. And the top part with the 80 gems is not a hit point, although it technically says it is in the garage. If you get behind this tank, it's 30 millimeters of armor in the rear. So load your HE and your 80 gems and you can annihilate this thing. Um, it can sometimes work really, really well, this armor, due to that angling. And people just can't penetrate you from the front because they don't have the gun caliber to do it. Uh, when they start hitting your cupola or loading the heat or getting to your sides even slightly they'll be able to overmatch your sides very easily and again if you want to know how easy it is to overmatch the sides you times 30 millimeters by three so 90 plus one millimeter you need a 91 millimeter caliber gun or higher to overmatch the sides anywhere at all and that's pretty much all you need to know about the armor profile of the wolverine so it's very unique it can work quite well um, due to that angling but as soon as things get above you then that's when things start to go bad and because you are very small um, it's very often things will face hug you and penetrate right through your um, upper hole um, or when you're coming over a ridge line they'll shoot up into your lower plate but from a distance from mid to long ranges this armor can work actually surprisingly well and hopefully you're going to be seeing that in the gameplay but that's enough talking about the stats of the gi joe Stritzvan S1 Wolverine. Let's get stuck into the gameplay. So you're joining me here on Corellia in the Wolverine in the first gameplay of today's video. Corellia being the map that was reintroduced today on the 1st of November. And this is a great map for the Wolverine. Lots of 
trees, lots of bushes, foliage for me to sit in and behind. You've got long sight lines and lots of room for me to manoeuvre and support my teammates and hopefully not get spotted myself. Um, you're going to be having a good indication in these replays with today's review of how the mobility is with this tank, how the hull traverse can hold you back, how the ATGMs and the siege mode mechanic works and uh, get a feeling of whether you feel like this is the tank for you or whether you feel like you might get a bit more experience playing the Swedish tank destroyers in World War II before you get a premium tank like this because uh, it's not the most competitive, like I was saying during the review, but it is a lot of fun, especially with these ATGMs you're going to be seeing in the uh, gameplays today. And uh, for a more experienced player, as a slightly harder challenge than a lot of the other tanks, it can be a lot of fun. So we're situated here on Corellia in E1. We've been sniping towards the north. I've been constantly scanning the horizon to see what kind of tanks are coming this way, um, knowing that I'm basically getting flanked, um, but I feel like I don't want to f pull back just yet and fall back because I'm not going to be as efficient. If I sit here, I might be able to spot for my teammates as well, play a sort of passive scouting role because of my fantastic view range and concealment, and the combination of those two means that if you don't fire your gun or your ATGMs, you can largely remain undetected unless people spot you with the True Vision system and you can play a kind of pseudo uh, light tank, tank destroyer scouting role if necessary. The only problem is once you do get spotted due to the really poor mobility in the um, siege mode and the really poor hull traverse of this tank, it doesn't take long before people take you out. So in a very short space of time, as is the case with quite a lot of battles um, in World of Tanks console, especially in the Cold War game mode. Uh, teams have completely eradicated very, very quickly indeed due to the increased DPM and penetration of all the tanks. It just means that um, we're going to have to make a final stand. And I wanted to show you this replay uh, purely because you can see what kind of uh, sniping you can get away with the gun but you're going to see me pick up quite a lot of damage towards the end of this game very quickly indeed and uh, it's just a good sort of taster of the kind of things you can expect from this tank and the kind of firepower it has when it does work and when you get into the right scenario so we're into our final stand now we managed to get a shot there very close to that fe4211 who doesn't spot us and you can see that we're not even spotted yet when we fired the atgms um, you can see the concealment is absolutely fantastic with the Wolverine. Um, it's now two <laughs> against uh, six, and we're going to back up against this rock. We have a tank destroyer behind us, and we're going to see if we manage to get some final damage in. Uh, but we have some ATGMs left alongside our 10.5 centimeter gun, and we're going to turn around and see if we can get some of these uh, ATGMs into the side of this M1. 03A2. Unfortunately for us, the first one hit the rock there. Uh, the next two penetrated, and he's taken out by the M50 Ontos, which we compared this tank to in the uh, replay. But you can see there, once you get trapped, you are a sitting duck. However, it's very hilarious blasting a Leopard 1 in the face with two ATGMs. We only deal 22 damage there with two ATGMs because of the uh, composite armor there. Um, from the tank that is pushing us behind the Magak 5 I believe and uh, yeah we get taken out but we managed to double our damage with our last stand there just showing the kind of thing you can expect from the um, Wolverine I almost forgot the name of the tank again um, it's very good at getting its damage out very quickly in the right scenarios. Unfortunately, that was the wrong scenario because we are going to lose this game. Spoiler alert. I'm going to skip forward towards the end of this replay and see how we did. So that was a defeat, like I said, but we managed to pick up three kills, 6.4k direct damage, 461 assistance, and 67,960 silver profit without a silver booster so that's it for the first game let's get stuck into the second one right so now we are on rosania in the wolverine and we're in g5 getting some nice sniping shots towards the center of the map and also the north of the map 
and we're just going to be putting our 10.5 centimeter gun to work and saving our ATGMs for the perfect opportunity. We're going to try and defend this castle location. And this was one of my first games in the play session today in the Wolverine. I was just getting to grips with this tank, kind of seeing what it was capable of. Um, I had a few games after this where I was trying to be more aggressive and it just didn't pay off. You can't be as aggressive and sneaky as something like the M50 Ontos or at least with my experience anyway due to the really really bad halt reverse. As soon as something gets up close and personal you're a goner. Um, you, you'll get tracked very easily um, and once you're double tracked, once people have got your sides, even if you do use the traction system you will really really struggle to get your gun round on them. You're going to have to entering your drive mode you're going to have to try and uh, spin your gun round and snap a shot in with the sort of free aim sniper mode and it just can be very hard indeed but i've noticed a very nice opportunity for us to fire some atgms the t72 av side on unfortunately he turned around at the wrong moment there we are managing to penetrate one get a couple of splashes here and that does help take the uh, enemy T-72V out of the game. We're up to 2,130 damage. And although we haven't penetrated every single one of our ATGMs, you can see that as soon as you start to penetrate, this damage really does build up very nice. Uh, this Mobat really didn't learn his lesson. He didn't look what was on offer in the store and he's taken out of the game. And just like that, we're up to 3,676 damage. There's a massive push around that side of the castle and we're going to see if we can just get as many shots in as possible against these tanks you can see i was going backwards thinking about i'm going to have to leave i'm going to have to leave at some point um it's hard to know sometimes and it's just down to experience and your gut feeling uh, when you feel like you're going to have to leave a certain situation with this tank or when you feel like you can stay and fight through it um, looking at the team position where I am now, I didn't feel like I'm going to be able to get out of the way of the tanks that were coming um, around the castle there. So I'm going to reverse up using the drive mode back around the other side. I'm going to reverse up onto this hill and hopefully I can catch something coming down to the left or right of me. Fortunately, there's a T-55 Enigma to my left and we're going to see if we can get some ATGMs into the rear of that tank because that's the only place that we're going to be able to penetrate him reliably with these ATGMs due to all of the composite um, armor that that tank has. So we're firing now our ATGMs on the move just randomly at the front of him, hoping to get some extra damage and... Although that was an incredibly quick game and ultimately it's going to be a defeat, we managed to pick up a very nice damage total indeed. So we're going to skip through the rest of this. Unfortunately, it takes a long, long time for this game to uh, end and it ends with a defeat anyway. So I'm going to skip forward and we're going to see how we did. So like I said, unfortunately, it was a defeat in that game, but we managed to pick up a nice profit of 125,000 silver. We pick up 6.9k direct damage, get a kill, finish second on our team, and we block 880 damage, all in 5 minutes and 48 seconds, and we died within 4 minutes. So it does show you the immense firepower potential of the Stritzvan S1 Wolverine. So now we're going to head on into the third gameplay. So we're now into the third gameplay of today's video, back in the Wolverine and we're on Harbron this time and we're going to set up in a nice sniping position near our capture circle at the start of the battle and see if we can get some shots off towards the centre of the map at anyone trying to get into position. And I'm always trying to find locations at the start of the battle to hide my tank as best as possible like bushes, trees, and find ridge lines that I can poke up, use the 13 degrees of gun depression in the siege mode and fall backwards. And I want to find a position where I can get nice shots, crossfire with my friendly tanks, but also a place where I'm not having to constantly switch in and out of the siege mode, because that can mean that you can miss shots, and it means that you have to reset your aim, and it's all about trying to pick the correct positioning for the tank on whatever map you are playing. Some maps are going to be harder than others, but maps, uh, very open maps with lots of foliage, long sight lines, and if you have 
good teammates that spot for you or you're in a platoon and you're playing with tanks that can go forward and spot for you this is a fantastic support tank and it can also be quite a good defensive tank fan thanks to your concealment and your view range alongside the epic firepower so we've got some nice shots here towards the uh, west of the map at the tanks coming out of the town there's an enemy wolverine where we managed to get a couple of ATGMs in and now we're trying to help cover our tank down there but unfortunately he gets taken out however we're just going to carry on firing our ATGMs and our 105mm rounds at these tanks that are trying to advance and it looks like we've got some support behind us so I'm not going to move just yet I'm aware that if I fired now I would most likely be spotted so I'm going to move forwards ever so slightly so I can get behind the safety of that rock should I need to. But you can see that the concealment is holding pretty firm here even then when I fire that T-72 didn't spot us and we're going to try and keep him tracked there in place and hopefully we can get some nice assistance. I'm pushing my ATGMs in the air and trying to rain them down so hopefully I can get a penetrating shot on top of the turret, on top of the hole or maybe even catch the cupola and we're constantly switching back to our 105mm gun whenever we have fired our ATGMs and it's like a rain of terror upon your enemy. We spot that there are ATGMs flying from that enemy Wolverine and we're trying to locate where he is. We get a nice shot there in blind and we're going to continue trying to get shots in because we can see that he is firing but it must be just the edge of his tank because we're not hitting him anymore. We can see the muzzle flash. Our friendly tanks are trying to fire at him as well but after a few rounds we're going to decide to give up and see if we can turn our attentions more towards the center of the map so now that we've cleared out a little bit of that push round towards the town we're going to go forward and see what else we can spot and now we've managed to get a nice snapshot into that t72 you can see the fantastic gun handling that this tank has and with this reload if you do run the vents and have the setup that i recommended in the start of the video when we're talking about the stats of this tank then you're going to have that sub six second reload where you can keep people tracked especially if they don't have a good commander or don't run a commander at all and there you can see the devastation two ATGMs followed up by a shot with the 105 and that M60A1 is down so we're going to make the long reload and whilst we are traversing the battlefield getting to our next targets we're going to um, try and get another magazine of ATGMs in and then hopefully by the time we get there they will be reloaded or they will be nearly reloaded but this game is ending pretty quickly we've had a pretty good damage result and we haven't even taken any fire as of yet so we're going to come up hopefully behind this heavy and medium tank and see if we can take them out of the game as well and boost our damage number just that little bit so we're going to come up now behind this WZ122 and this T-72, enter our siege mode, we get a nice shell there into the WZ-122, he misses his ATGM thankfully for us, which leaves us free to get a last shell in and fire a couple of uh, ATGMs there in celebration at the back of the dead T-72, but another pretty good game in terms of the damage numbers and a victory finally for the uh, Wolverine with 1.2k base experience, 150,000 silver profit without a silver booster, 2 kills, 6.5k direct damage, 721 assistance and 470 blocks. So that's it for the third game. Now we're going to go ahead to the fourth and final game. Righty ho, so we're now on Siegfried line in the Wolverine and this is the fourth and final gameplay of today's video it's a minute into this particular battle we've been keeping an overwatch on the field and finally the light tanks have made themselves known and we're going to try and put this fantastic gun to use you're going to see some pretty terrible aiming mixed with some very uh, erratic driving by the light tank drivers which is what they should do and you can see how pesky some of the light tanks can be uh, in the cold war game mode with the speeds that they can go sniping at mid to long ranges can be very hard 
this is with 1500 plus meters a second shell velocity so you can see how hard it can be with some of the slower shell velocity guns but we are fortunate enough to have hardcover to our left and we have a good overwatch of the field we have some light tanks battling it out in the field so we're pretty safe for the moment a lot of our heavy tanks up here on the ridge i kind of wish they would have pushed forwards uh, now because the end result might be a little different spoiler alert but we still have a pretty damn good uh, personal damage result and i've been seeing some very good damage numbers i'm recording this particular gameplay slightly later than the other ones or the commentary i should say and i've seen some people have some crazy games in this tank so it's popular amongst some of the best players and i'm sure it's popular amongst pretty much every um, kind of player base that we have but i think the the people that are the more experienced players i'm seeing some crazy damage numbers and very consistent damage numbers so it's definitely going to be a hit or miss tank it depends whether you like the swedish tank destroyers if you played the world war ii game mode but it's a lot of fun once you get used to it, it takes the time getting used to the siege mechanic and also to know where to position yourself on the map and to get the most out of the ATGMs but it can be very fun when you're uh, sort of machine gunning your ATGMs into the sides or rear of your enemy so we've now turned our attention in this battle from the field to the tanks that are coming out of the 9 and 0 line towards our capture circle and we're going to see if we can get some shots and some ATGMs into the tanks that are trying to push their um battle we are behind by two tanks so far so hopefully we can help bring it back we've got our atgms loaded and i'll have my sight set on this m60a2 two penetrating atgms there followed up by another pe penetrating atgm one misses unfortunately but we still have four left two more penetrations and I think this might be the end of that tank and it is the end of the M60A2 and we're now up to 4k damage and the damage racks up so quickly when you penetrate these ATGMs it's not that easy but when you get the sides in the rear and you get lightly armoured tanks they can be absolutely annihilated and then of course you have that fantastic DPM with the 105mm gun or the 10.5cm gun whatever you want to call it but we have two ATGMs left tried to get two into the rear of the FE4211 and we did we snap a shot in with our primary gun pop our smoke consumable and then we're going to try and reverse but I've seen that this FE4211 is stopped or I've attracted there we get a shot into the back of his turret we are down by just one tank so it's a very even game and every single damaging shot that I can put in now will help my teammate out going for the tracks there on that McGuck 5 but he was low enough we could take him out and now we're going to try and uh, take out this T-72AV I was trying to track him in place and I wish I did because I would have got all that assistance from that light tank that put an ATGM right into his rear but we get up the subsequent shell and finish him off and now we're going to go after this M60A1 a bit of hard cover in the way, a little bit annoying here, but we're going to wait in this position. We've now switched to our ATGM, so we're going to see if we can finish this object 934 off with a double barrage of ATGMs, which we do. And we get a subsequent two penetrations there into the medium tank. We have four uh, ATGMs according to our screen, but we know that that means eight because it is a two burst uh per pull of your trigger which is absolutely fantastic 600 damage every time we pull the trigger and penetrate can't argue with that and now we're gonna enter our siege mode again and you can see that it can be quite annoying having to quickly enter your siege mode quickly exit it it's a lot to think about and if you're not very dexterous and you're not very quick on the controls you can get caught out in the open double tracked and it can be game over so if you're a little bit slow on the controls I wouldn't recommend this as a tank unless you have practice with the Swedish tank destroyers that are in the World War II game mode uh, but of course it completely is up to you as a competitive premium tank it's probably not that competitive unless you are very adept with tank destroyers and with the siege mode mechanic um, if I was going to go for a tank destroyer the only other option for a premium tank would be the M50 Ontos and uh, if you're looking for a tank destroyer like a typical tank destroyer you can go for something like the object 120 which is a pretty decent era 2 tank destroyer and if you're looking for anything just to make silver and competitive 
any kind of the Leopard Variants Era 2 Premiums are good. The T55 Enigma is also good, which you could get uh, with the Awakened Season, which we're currently on. So in this particular game, it's now me and a light tank versus the four enemies. We have fallen back using the 50 kilometers an hour reverse speed in the drive mode. We're going to set up on this ridge line. Hopefully this Sheridan can spot the enemy tanks coming towards us. We're going to try and feather a shell into this medium tank. There's one capturing our base and there's this McGuck 6B GAL there, which we snap a shell into over the ridge line. 13 degrees of gun depression can come in handy very much indeed. I wish I was a little bit more aggressive now. I should have pushed forward and try and get some more shells into this T-55 Enigma, but I was hoping that he would turn the other way and show his rear to us so that we would be able to uh, get 80 GMs into his side. We managed to get one through his drive wheel, then splash one off his front. And now you can see the problems when you are in the siege mode and people are trying to circle you. However, I pop the smoke, go in there and try and reverse out of it so I have my front facing the enemy. Unfortunately, the Sheridan falls to the T-55 and it's me versus him now. And I'm just going to have to try and track him. Reverse back to the barrier of the map so I can hopefully stop him getting around me. Um, and now I am trying to get out of the siege mode, but I am trapped and unfortunately that's the game over for me. If I was a little bit more aggressive earlier and my team were as well, we could have taken that one down. But you live and you learn and it's always a good experience. And I just thought I'd show you the kind of weaknesses and the kind of good games you can have in defeats because you're just not capable sometimes to take down those really clutch one versus two one versus three four or five it can be very difficult in this tank but that review in particular or that gameplay i should say is a very good indication of the kind of firepower you can have mixed with the weaknesses we make 140,000 silver profit five kills 7.4k direct damage 775 assistance and we block 2220 showing you how effective the armor can be so i hope that you've all had a very informative watch of today's review or just enjoyed the gameplay if you skip forward to that it's all been time stamped for you thank you all so much for your support and until next time i'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now